Hello you delightful evil little pumpkins, my name is Philip Magnus and this is Gaming Now. Welcome, 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 please be seated. First off we're going to start with a few interesting pieces of news freshly from the media. Yes, for one it seems that Mass Effect Andromeda will not be coming out later this year as was previously expected and announced. It appears that the game, courtesy of Bioware, and the latest in a frankly quite good series of science fiction games is going to come out in early 2017, which means next year, probably around the same time as we are right now. And if you are not watching this and if you cannot read which date it was posted, this video is from March, the beginning of March in fact. So yes, we have a lot of time left until we can go back to the universe and the galaxy as presented in Bowers' sci-fi epic. But if Mass Effect was never your cup of tea, perhaps you will enjoy these news coming from Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 2. In fact, the game that came out probably seven, eight years ago now, honestly I can't remember anymore, is going to add a Necron hero in its co-op survival mode. Interesting, right? I never expected it, but cool, kind of cool how invested publisher Sega, which uh, the company took the reins after THQ bankrupted last... no, actually back in 2014. The point being that I really enjoy how Sega are going on about the franchise. First they've got a nice thing going with Creative Assembly and Total War Warhammer, and now they've also shown yet again for the third time in the last few months that they are actually very interested in keeping the community of Dawn of War and Dawn of War 2 very much alive. That's a good sign for any of you who hope, just as I hope, that Dawn of War 3 may one day become reality. Also a new patch will launch alongside this overlord, and the patch will address the most prominent community reported bugs and add new achievements. Full patch notes for that can be found in the link below, in the description. But hey, I get it, not all of you have a taste for sci-fi, so maybe you'd rather take your gaming in a fantasy setting. Maybe you also enjoy awesome, sensational, beautiful, emotional games. In that case, you can buy Ori and the Blind Forest's Definitive Edition, which is coming out just a few days from now, on the 11th of March. Why would you do that? Well, for one, Ori and the Blind Forest is really quite, quite lovely. And also it is a definitive edition, which means that with it come tweaks to the game's theater mode, new story material and a brand new arena. So even if you are not, in fact, someone who has had the pleasure to not play the game, you have a lot to gain from this definitive new edition. Ah, but if you've already bought the game, what do you do then? Well, sadly it's not a free update, it's going to be chargeable, yeah. The company that developed the game, Moon Studios, has announced that you will be able to upgrade for a small upgrade fee, which is only logical, I suppose, but it would have been nice if they had released it for free as a sign of respect to all the past consumers. I for one have not played Ori and the Blind Forest and am looking forward to grabbing this definitive edition. But perhaps your tastes for fantasy are not on the cute side as much as on the bloody, bloody side of it. You know, magic and murder and mayhem. In that case, do you happen to remember a small game by the name of Chivalry Medieval Warfare? Well, the developers of that game Tom Banner Studios 
just announced Mirage, Arcane Warfare, which seems to be chivalry with magic. And I suppose that would make it magicalry? No? No? Okay. Anyway, they've released a small teaser, and also they will have a bigger gameplay trailer that will probably detail a lot more of just what the game will consist of than is known right now. And when that trailer will be released, I'm not sure, but I think it will be on the 9th of March. So that's a day to mark on your calendars if you're up for that and if you are interested. If you want to see the teaser, you can click on the link somewhere right now. Probably. Should be. Have I done my job correctly? Huh. No idea. Or perhaps you like vampires. Well, if you do, we've got a lot to talk about. First off, let's talk about vampire. Or vampire. Or... Yeah, let's go with vampire. Vampire is the latest game coming from Don't Not Entertainment, the developer of one of my favorite games of 2015, Life is Strange, and also of another game which was released back in 2014, Remember Me. It was not that great. But anyway, let's concentrate on Vampire. Vampire is going to be a horror role-playing game set in an early 20th century London, after Europe's population was decimated, or rather absolutely crippled, by World War I. And after that, that nasty little Spanish flu. Anyway, Don't Not Entertainment have released their first four screenshots and you are probably looking at them right now if I've done my job. Well, honestly, if I can say something about it, it's that it looks dark and gloomy and very 20th century London with a taste of plague. Yeah. Well, supposedly, the good thing about the game is that you can feed on anyone. Although, what happens when you feed on the quest giver is not yet quite certain. Will it have noticeable effects? Will it have none? We're going to find out soon enough, hopefully. There is combat, some combat with melee weapons and probably with ranged shooting. And I expect since I will be a vampire, well with supernatural raw powers. The game is not going to be released this year, actually. It's going to be released in 2017, which is a long time from now, an entire year, in fact. And it will be released for the PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Development is being undertaken. Get it? Undertaken because... Graves and Undertaken. Yeah, I know it's bad, I know, I'm sorry. It's going to be undertaken by a different team to the one that worked on Life is Strange. So, honestly, I have no idea what to expect. It sounds good. It sounds quite interesting. As for the team that is working, that used to work on Life is Strange, one can always hope that they are working on Life is Strange Season 2, right? But hey, don't take my word for it, take the developer's words instead. Here's what publisher Focus Home will say about the game so far. Every character in the game has his or her own unique backstory and will affect the world. Be careful who you choose to hunt, as they will be gone forever, and their death will impact in a meaningful way the world that surrounds you. Feeding on human blood will not just keep you alive, it will also unlock new vampiric powers to use. As a doctor and a vampire who used to be human, you may also choose to heal your potential prey, crafting medicines from items collected in the game world. 
There will be times when exploration and seduction will only get you so far, and you'll need to resort to engaging in Vampire's dynamic, melee-focused real-time combat. It blends hard-hitting melee combat with supernatural vampire powers. Find and loot materials and components from the fresh corpses of your victims or during exploration in order to craft and improve tools, melee and ranged weapons, as well as special ammunition and coating to exploit the weaknesses of your enemies. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's see if they can deliver. In between our next piece of news, I would only like to remind all of you Warhammer fans out there that Grim Dawn was recently fully released from Early Access and Steam, so now would be actually a pretty good time to go and grab it. 10% off this particular offer ends on March the 3rd, so head on to Steam and grab it if that's your thing. The game looks good, although I'm not grabbing it quite yet. I think I will wait. Plus, I've never been big on action role-playing games, and I do have Diablo 3 and Path of Exile and Torchlight 2 to contend my attention whenever I get the need to play one of those. But hey, if you like Warhammer, certainly is going to do something for you. But talking about Warhammer, now would be a good time to click the link on the screen that will lead you to Creative Assembly's latest Warhammer Total War video. It is quite interesting, although some graphical issues will be easily noted. And if you notice, the comment section is filled with hate, that should not surprise you. Creative Assembly have earned the wrath of many a man with their, well, let's just say, unfriendly pre-order bonuses. And yet another example of a business model that is kind of shady and not at all consumer-friendly. Thanks, Creative Assembly! In case you have played the recently released Street Fighter V, you might be glad to hear that all those pesky rage quitters are soon going to be punished for their awful behavior. Why? Because once you rage quit in Street Fighter V, you actually get no penalties to your win rate or, you know, to your winning streaks and absolutely no punishment makes a lot of people do that. It's preferable to losses for the simple reason that you don't lose your rank and league points. Thanks to all the feedback the players have given Capcom, it appears the company is finally going to do something about it. They are currently working on a permanent solution to the problem, though they have absolutely no idea when exactly this latest patch is going to be released. That said, they are going to take direct action starting next week to punish those players who are abusing the system in that particular way. In case you haven't been following, Street Fighter V is something of a mess at this point in time. The game has a sorry excuse for a single player campaign, or you know, story mode, as they call it, and they have a lot of issues in the connection department as well which is really bad when your biggest plus is the multiplayer and the competitive scene of the game is suffering because of that. Some folks in Europe, the Middle East and various other regions are still facing long waits and even though Capcom made a few tweaks last week, they are keeping an eye on things and hoping that they will soon resolve the issues. I have yet to play Street Fighter V, but from what I hear, it's a lot more like Street Fighter II compared to the later iterations of the series. Some have considered this to be quite good, others, well, not so much. What I know about the game is that it is somewhat easier, at least in the sense that there are no longer as many weird and difficult combinations of buttons 
as they were in the previous game. Are you a fan of virtual reality? Because it's a pretty good time to like virtual reality right now. Pre-orders just opened for the HTC Vive, quite, quite expensive that device, and the Oculus Rift of course launches at the end of this month. Also, the HoloLens Development Edition is due this month, which means that we can buy, or rather you can buy, a HoloLens development kit if you have $3,000 to spare. It is shipping on March the 30th and Microsoft have shown off the games and software coming with it. In case you are curious or rich enough to care for HoloLens, you can take a look at the link below. It is going to show you the three games that will be shipped with the HoloLens device and also the HoloLens device itself. Personally, I think I will not partake in this particular HoloLens device. I'd rather like to wait to see if actually it's any good. Thank you very much. But hey, I'm not that enthusiastic. Not at least quite yet. But it can happen, it might happen. After all, I never say no to good virtual reality. Last but not least, let us all celebrate the disgraced senator who campaigned against violent video games going to jail. Yes, that's right, a former US state senator by the name of Leland Yi has been sentenced to five years in jail. For what reason? Well, the charges were of corruption and weapon smuggling. He actually pleaded guilty, which is quite impressive, really. You know, that particular senator was a very vocal opponent of video game violence. He campaigned for tighter restriction around the sale of games and a state-backed ratings board to replace the current United States-wide ESRB rating system. Yeah, so he admitted political corruption charges, which means that he was accepting bribes for different favors, and also he was involved in a never completed plan to smuggle guns into the United States from the Philippines. Now that's impressive. He used to serve, actually he did serve, 25 years in office as a democratic representative no less for California too. Lovely, lovely, absolutely fantastic. So yes, in office he campaigned for better US gun control and for you know, better control over video games. But hey, seems that he should have campaigned for better control of his own idiotic brain. Good job, Senator Yi. Excellent, absolutely beautiful. Also, funny thing, Senator Yi was originally due to face other charges as well. Like, gun smuggling and corruption aren't enough, I know. Some of those were of participating in racketeering, selling guns without a license, and agreeing to join a murder for hire scheme that would probably kill some undercover FBI agent, or whatnot. Or at least so CBS reports. These charges were dropped once the senator pleaded guilty to corruption, which really is very, very impressive. I'm glad to see democracy being upheld in the United States of America. It's very, very close to moving me to tears. I'm sobbing right now. <sighs> Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to give me some feedback or would like to share, subscribe and like this video, please do so. Thanks for your time, dearie. Bye-bye.